Let's now move on to facts or facts. And there are roughly 7.8 billion people living on the planet right now. That's nothing when we look at how many other species there are around the world. These numbers, especially when it came to the rats, I was like, Whoa, really? Maybe up to 20 billion rats. A study published last year found there are as many as 50 billion birds in the world. Great news for all those birders out there. Yeah. You know, uh, as critters get smaller, the population obviously tends to get larger. There are about 500 trillion krill. I don't even know how you count that. I don't either. Right? Living in the world's ocean. But out of these numbers, none of them come close to the number of ants on the planet. We're talking 20 quadrillion well, Again, ants. what does that even mean? That's hard to fathom. Yeah. Oh it's unfathomable and frankly, uh, makes us feel pretty insignificant, right? Like, mm. relatively speaking. Dr. Mike Ropp from the University of Maryland is here to help us unpack this ginormous number for us. So, Jordan's first question, you, you do the first question because I know this is the one that you kept asking Which all one? day. How do you figure it yeah, out? Yeah, how do you figure it out? How do you quantify that? And how do you really estimate, I mean, what? They count, the, one, right, two, right. magnifying glass. Yeah, no, no, they uh, it was very clever, guys. They were very clever. The scientists led by a team from Germany, what they did is they took data collected all around the world in all our major ecosystems using two different methods. One was what we call pitfall traps, where we actually have a, a standard unit of measure and we can collect the ants that are falling into these pitfall traps. The other way was by fogging, uh, misting, tree canopies and then collecting the ants that dropped out of those canopies. So there were many, many studies that went into this all around the world. You know, ants are ubiquitous. They're found on every continent except the Antarctic and Arctic. So they're all over the place. All right. That's so how they did it. There's a lot of them. So it's okay if we, you know, see one crawling across the desk and grab it instead of taking it nicely, like I try to do with bugs, take them and bring them outside. Oh, you're so sweet and thoughtful. <laughs> Well, I don't know. Yeah, I usually take them out or I figure out a way to get them out of there. So I trap them out or something like that. But, you know, they will be in the kitchen. They're going to be all over the place. Hey, two weeks ago, I was 10 stories up having dinner uh, in the middle of Washington, D.C. I dropped a piece of broccoli and within five minutes, there were ants there yeah. carrying that thing away. So they are indeed all over the place. They're really important, though. Yeah. And so when we look at it, you know, whether it's looking at it climatologically speaking, is this number reflective of where it should be? Well, that's a good start point, uh, Jordan. Again, what this is going to do is give us a baseline. We now know we have a pretty good estimate of these little creatures that, as Ed Wilson said, run the world. So we have the benchmark now. And as as things change and they're rapidly changing, now we can go back and see exactly how things are changing in the different ecological zones on our planet. Why are ants so important? Why do we need so many of them? What are they doing for us? Well, you know, look at this little leaf cutter. This is one of my favorites. In the tropics and subtropics, they're super important. What this thing is going to do, take it back to its colony. It's the only other species on the planet that's a farmer. They're going to inoculate it with fungi. The fungi are going to grow and they're going to eat. They're going to eat the fungi. So they're recycling vegetation. They're little geniuses at basically connecting the different level and food webs. They help plants disperse their seeds. They turn over the soil. They basically are going to eat pests in our landscapes, in our agricultural crops. And in turn, ants are going to be eaten by all kinds of mammals and reptiles, including birds. So they're basically helping materials and energy move up and down food webs. It's All amazing right, to see them. What? Say, I'll try to not be so angry next time I have. An yeah, ant probably. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing to see them at work too. Um, you know, I was in Central America over the summer, just seeing the line of ants and how far they go. The leaf cutting yeah. ones that you were talking about. They know what to do. Yeah. They're extremely strong. What would this planet look like if we didn't have these insects? Would it even be around? It wouldn't be here. Wow. We wouldn't be here. I mean, it would be totally different. This would be a very strange place were it not for the ants and all the other creatures, both plant and animal, that depend on ants. I think if ants are gone, we're probably going to. What is this about ants are actually outweighing us? You mean like pound for pound? 
Well, not quite pound for pound. There are some big ones, but uh, <laughs> no, they do, they do outweigh uh, the entire biomass of all birds and wild mammals combined. Uh, it's I, it's some crazy number. Uh, I think it's something like 12 megatons or something like that. Wow. Uh, the total uh, biomass of ants on the planet. We're actually, because we're so much bigger, Steph, mm -hmm. we actually outweigh the ants, but they do outweigh birds and all wild mammals, which is, is simply a huge, huge amount of mass. Uh, how many um, ant farms does, do you have, Dr. Roth? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Are you, that's a good question. Are you an ant farmer? <laughs> No, not no. really. You know, we did some of this when we were kids, but I'm just basically an ant lover. And uh, yeah. I try to visit the ants at every opportunity, but whether they're on the kitchen counter, whether they're tending the aphids on my plants, or whether I'm down in Costa Rica just trying to you figure this out. You live in an ant farm. <laughs> you, don't need, you don't need one of those little plastic ones. You live in an ant farm. I'm just glad they're this big yeah. and they're not yeah, I know. this big. Can Dr. Mike Rupp, professor uh, at the University of Maryland Department of Entomology, thanks for joining us today. Maybe you could get your kids an ant farm for the holidays. Why would I do that? Well, they're going to open cool the lid are. and be like, oh, they I forgot would? about it. Of course. They're so, they'll be like, oh, they I forgot. And then they're all over the place. They don't want to do that.